welcome to the next session of uh, mbed software testing unit 2 uh, the testing methods uh, lecture 14 uh, this is a important unit uh, because uh, based on this uh, the entire uh, the entire mbed software testing uh, lies so we will be doing a detailed uh, understanding and uh, detailed examples so through of uh, different testing methods it is it's very important to understand uh, testing methods uh, like what we spoke about uh, black box testing and different uh, uh, design techniques or uh, selection techniques of uh, black box uh, testing uh, today we will uh, study the boundary value analysis uh, this is uh, again a design technique test selection criteria technique uh, again for this uh, the platform is equivalence partition what are the fundamentals that we had uh, understood in equivalence partitioning same thing also exception uh, being some of the values we consider differently okay so before that we will uh, just uh, have a glance of uh, what we studied in uh, equivalence partitioning uh equivalence partitioning we know uh, why we need because uh, we cannot afford to have uh, numerous uh, test cases simply because uh, we have a possibility of doing tests with a different uh, number of uh, inputs uh, because the system can behave either uh, a normal way or an abnormal way for a typical requirement uh, we need to test only the sufficient uh, levels of uh, inputs uh, how we can do that uh, reduction is by having the partitioning that is called equivalence partitioning also we understood that uh, uh, the basic uh, purpose is to reduce the total number of test cases by partitioning the input conditions into finite number of equivalence classes so we also studied about uh, uh, the first level of uh, valid and invalid test cases first we are going to define all the test cases so then uh, we are going to have a partition of uh, one usual behavior uh, what is expected uh, for testing those inputs those are called valid equivalence partitioning the other one uh, which is other than uh, the normal behavior uh, in terms of uh, the outside uh, the count or whatever it is those are all called invalid partition and uh, we define the numbers uh, accordingly equivalent uh, valid one valid two valid three the based on the classes and each class will have at least one test case selected from and we also studied an example of uh, integer n ranging from -19 to 992 plus 99 so valid equivalence class we have minus -10 minus -9 minus -1 so like this we have about five valid equivalence classes similarly we have about three to four invalid equivalence classes where we are trying to input the values such a way that it is testing it is tested with an invalid range of inputs Similarly, another example of phone number we had studied, and also we understood about guidelines. There are about three, four, or uh, five guidelines uh, uh, that are important in terms of time, memory, size, range, count, etc. Uh, we took a few more examples uh, in terms of temperature from 15 to 40. Then we have uh, fuel level sensors. <coughs> having uh, three types of uh, indicators yellow red green so we know that uh, what is uh, invalid what is valid so basically we are going to draw a range of uh, all the test cases and again as the range we are going to uh, create a table it's called a truth table having uh, all the possible combinations defined for each of that uh, inputs with the help of different columns and the further we are going to have the equivalence uh, classes divided as valid and invalid as per the below table 
we we also know that uh, we can have the output equivalence uh, classes if defined as well not only the input equivalence so that is about uh, equivalence partition so today we will uh, go through the black box uh, testing uh, technique uh, called boundary value analysis so what is a boundary value analysis first uh, we understood that the equivalence partitioning uh, is done with the help of varied and equivalent classes where varied will have uh, uh, the numerous uh, number of test cases you can see that black dots within the first pi and the second pi has uh, invalid uh, test cases and the further we are going to group them in terms of uh, say this is one set this is another set is another set so like this we have say for valid uh, some four are there for invalid there are equivalence valid the one then we have equivalence valid two then we equivalence valid three etc similarly we have equivalence invalid the one we have equivalence invalid two so equivalence invalid three here we have equivalence valid four there are four valid equivalence classes and three invalid equivalence classes so out of this group of Valid classes. We can select any one which is appropriate for that particular system, which is under test, or that particular requirement, which is under test. Now, again, we might have one or more covering within the equivalence class. It is very important for us to understand the typical requirement behavior, also, because we need to see most of the requirements lying with a a uh, bounded values right like a and b so surrounding a and surrounding b how we are going to test it that also we need to consider which is which is nothing but the boundary value which will be subject to test so continuation of the same uh, equivalence partitioning here we have a boundary value analysis so we choose a selection uh, this is what we have done of uh, each group of equivalence classes varied or invalid one test case we have selected you can see that uh, round marked ones as the chosen uh, test cases so if an input condition specifies a range bounded by value a and b test cases should be designed with value a and b and also just above a and just below b and just uh, like this we are going to have it so the next slide so you can see there is a boundary of uh, a Just above A, just above B. Suppose the dot that is lying on the boundary, we need to test with a value which is just above A, just below A. This was the first equivalence class. Similarly, for our equivalence class, we need to have it. Similarly, for invalid classes also, we need to have it the same way. So, which is nothing but the boundary value analysis. So, the first step is create test cases to test boundaries of equivalence classes. for each identified boundary in input and output create two test cases that means we know that two dots are here right for the boundary conditions two test cases definitely are going to be there one test case on each side of the boundary but both as close as possible to the actual boundary line that means 
uh, how the system behaves for that boundary inputs one for the low one for the high or it could be one for the uh, negative the other one could be for positive or one for the below another one for the above so likewise we are going to have boundary values defined so i will repeat again we have a valid and invalid classes partition defined we are going to define them as equivalence classes valid and invalid we have a selection criteria within that each one good test selection we are going to have it within the valid and invalid classes once we have that we are going to add further for the requirement which are lying uh, with the bounded values with the help of uh, this boundary inputs and outputs you can see for each of the equivalence classes valid and invalid we have a boundary conditions defined okay okay so next one is the test cases made by boundary value analysis will catch more types of errors you know why because the system behavior of the boundary could change suppose the system is supposed to take a variable of 1.0 to 5.0 and we are trying to test 0.9 or we are trying to test 4.9 or 5.1 so system should behave exactly so we should uh, be predictable basically the chance of catching a errors or uh, issues at the boundary is more actually that is why we need to have a boundary value analysis but the disadvantage is that we will have more uh, test cases on the other hand there will be more test cases which is more time consuming definitely it is time consuming because we need to identify for each of the boundary conditions but it's equally important to identify the bva the boundary value analysis test cases if you do boundaries only you have covered all the partitions as well that means definitely it is going to cover all the partitions but better to have an intermediate value along with the boundary conditions but what is said here is technically correct and may be okay if everything works correctly if the borders only are selected so better to the best practice is to have an intermediate value along with the boundary that means you have 1 to 10 as a requirement input it is good to have a boundary value analysis for 1 and 10 and an intermediate value such as 5 so how many test cases we will have for 1 we have a upper boundary and lower boundary as to two test cases for 10 we have a upper boundary and lower boundary as 9 and 11 two more test cases it will become 4 then an intermediate value that is nothing but uh, the fifth one So totally five test cases for one to ten. If the test fails, it is the whole partition is wrong. It is not the test outcome or the uh, test uh, result. It is the test enter test. Uh, what we are trying to do within that uh, partition. If that fails, that means there is a problem with that partition, or is a boundary in the wrong place. Have to test mid partition anyway. Testing only extremes may not give confidence for typical use scenarios, especially for users. Is as I said, we need to have an intermediate value, a good value as well, like five, when you consider ranges one to ten. Uh, usually, the system uh, works from one to ten, like two, it could be three or five, six, whatever it is. So, better to identify one intermediate value. Good example is we. Now the car speed is zero to one twenty, uh, but there are less chances that uh, uh, the driver always drives uh, at a zero speed, or uh, there is very few seconds that driver drives more than one uh, fifty or two hundred kilometers. So trying it or testing it once at that boundary conditions is good, but it's very important that system is stable or. Uh, car is stable when it is driving in the range around 40 to 60 km so that is what it is called as normal test scenarios 
that uh, really gives a good confidence about the particular test. Sometimes uh, it may be difficult to set the boundaries. Why? Because uh, we know that cast speed is zero to fifty, but going by the theory, we may not be able to test it uh, less than zero, right? So how will you going to feed it? So uh, are you going to take it reverse? It will definitely not show as minus five or minus ten for sure. But we should have some simulation or some mechanism which is going to be costlier. Uh, why we need it is uh, we need to test it. Uh, Uh, in terms of theoretically, the requirements whether it is collapsing or failing, if the speed is uh, less than zero, or likewise, or the RPM, it could be it could not be speed, it could be engine RPM, uh, which goes beyond certain level. Oh, what is the behavior of that? So likewise, we need to have testing, but to test that, it may be a bit challenging in terms of setting up or the environment. So we need to plan it appropriately. So basically, boundary value analysis is a refinement of equivalence class partitioning. Instead of choosing any representative for each equivalence class, uh, the main interest is focused on the boundaries for each of the class. The idea is to select one test case for each boundary of the equivalence class. The properties of a test case is the test that belongs to a defined equivalence class at that. It tests a value that it is preferable on. That means uh, one good value we need to select out of that class, or at least reasonably close to the boundary of that particular equivalent class. So the main reason why boundaries are important is that uh, they are generally used by programmers to control the execution of the program. Right. So programmers or the implementers would have implemented. Boundary values uh, as a boundary conditions such as uh, less than, greater than, equal to, etc. So if that is a uh, let us say RPM is six thousand to seven thousand two hundred. Definitely, he has considered the lowest value as well as the highest value while implementing the code. So that is why we need to have the boundary value analysis. So to control the execution, the coder or the implementer would have had this control of execution based on these values. Uh, definitely, we will have uh, for implementing this. If then case statements, etc. So all this will be exercised on boundary value analysis. So while doing this, uh, it is bound to happen that uh, he could uh, have implemented wrongly, or he would have made some mistakes while implementing. So we will study that. What are those implementation issues? Uh, next slides. Uh, and uh, not that every one we tested twice. Uh, there are two different equivalence classes. So the two slides suit two sides of the border, and uh, there will uh, will be test for the boundary in both these equivalence classes. Yes. Coverage is measured by dividing the number of executed test cases. So all these aspects we need to consider. Okay. So in other terms, we will detail out equivalence or boundary value analysis. The idea behind this principle is that. Defects can be caused by simple programming errors related to erroneous or uh, erroneous use of boundaries. As I said, less than, greater than. So typically, the programmer has coded less than or when less than or equal should have been coded.
when determining the test cases values around these boundaries are chosen so that each boundary is tested with a minimum of two test cases that means the lower one the upper one one which the input value is equal to the boundary the one that is just beyond it so this way we are going to design the test so that it will identify the underneath uh, issues of implementation so example uh, let's see if a requirement says a less than b and uh, in code it is implemented as a less than or equal to b then detection possibility is more with bva than ep bva means boundary value analysis ep is equivalence partitioning so this will bring out the issue of the boundary values when uh, the implementer has implemented wrong in uh, again is a less than b like a less than or equal to b one more example if a less than b is implemented wrongly as a greater than b this is also typically a wrong uh, then both ep and uh, bv could detect the error because this uh, the whole purpose of uh, test itself will collapse here so definitely in any of the test definitely is going to be caught the above one still it is a valid but equal to condition lies for the boundary so it will be caught in the bva the boundary value analysis then uh, ep we would not have listed that uh, particular test scenario for the equal condition so going by the earlier example what we discussed uh, uh, in the previous session 15 less than or equal to temperature which is less than or which is less than equal to 40 that means temperature lies between 15 and 40 it also includes 15 as well as 40 including 15 and 40 and assuming a tolerance of 0.1 in the temperature values the boundary values to be selected are 14.9 15 14 and 40.1 so these are the equivalence classes along with the boundary value analysis. so what are those invalid equivalence classes here we have 14.9 as invalid 40.1 as invalid 15 is a normal 40 is a valid because equal equal is there it had equal not been there then we would have had a valid class as 39 so suppose there is no equal to then in sub 15 we should have had a 14 as a valid equal class similarly if there was no equal for less than 40 then 39 would have been a valid equivalence class 40 would have been a invalid equivalence class and of course we have a tolerance of 0.1 definitely in terms of boundary we need to have uh, the 0.1 is considered as the lower side after applying it to the 15 we can have as well uh, 15.1 here 39.9 right so these are some of the valid and invalid equivalence classes and the and the boundary value analysis so these two techniques are very important in terms of designing the tests Uh, boundary value analysis is a refinement of equivalence class partition. You know, instead of choosing and uh, representing from each equivalence class, the test is focused around the boundaries. So, so that is the main thing about this. Okay. So that is about uh, boundary value analysis. An example of uh, temperature. <coughs> Let's look into some more uh, example. Uh, the same example what we had uh, during equivalence uh, partitioning. Uh, n digit can take an input from minus nine to nine to less nine to nine. what are the boundary cases here there is no question of uh, valid and invalid equivalence classes so it all will uh, 
have it, but out of which the worthy cases we have to select it as a valid or invalid equivalence class. So let's focus on the boundary case. So what is the boundary case for main less than or equal to n? N is less than or equal to n. So here are the boundary cases that we can have: minus hundred, minus ninety nine, minus ninety eight. Of course, minus ninety nine as well is a boundary case because it is on the exact <coughs> edge of the lower boundary. Similarly, we have minus ten and minus nine. Minus one zero one nine in ten ninety eight ninety nine hundred. Uh, so these intermediate values also will be considered because uh, these are all valid equivalence uh, classes uh, range. So we need to have this along with the boundary cases. Example: uh, the next example is about uh, one number what we have seen earlier. So we will have uh, boundary cases uh, such as. Uh, Area code with 199, 200, 201 at the lower boundary and at the higher boundary 998, 999 and 1000. For the prefix, we know that 200, 199, 198 as the boundary and uh, the prefix at the higher boundary is with 998, 999 and 1000. And we have prefix any four digits. So we should have three digits uh, as an input one suffix and five digits as another input suffix. So these are all some of the valid equivalence classes with boundary conditions, uh, which are allowed to test it. So it's a very important aspect uh, of boundary value analysis. Okay, so we have gone through the example. Um, <coughs> In general, application of boundary value analysis can be done in a uniform manner. That means uniformly we can select based on the input what the requirement is. Uh, suppose if the requirement is a bit complicated, having uh, numerous uh, uh, inputs and outputs, then better to have a defined uh, truth table. Suggested so to have a truth table identifying. All the combinations. First, identify all the combinations. Then, this is the first step. The next step is to go for identifying the monetary value analysis along with the equivalence partitioning. Or equivalence partitioning is defined first, then eliminate or add. Are complement to the equivalence partition with boundary conditions. So that is what uh, should be the uh, general behavior, which is especially important for complex uh, requirements. So we know that we are going to address first the requirements, each requirements, of how it can be tested. If that requirement needs another requirement to support, we may group that. We know that how the grouping can be done, that we have seen in our uh, unit one uh, sessions. The basic form of implementation is to maintain all but one of the variables at their nominal values and allowing the remaining variable to take on its extreme value. That means nominal, normal or average value first we have to select, then allowing the remaining variable uh, to take as extreme values, the values used to test the extremities of the below. That means as we have seen in the previous example. Uh, to be precise on uh, the selection, we are going to have uh, first the analog or the complex requirements, these type of uh, extremities. So we are going to have a minimal, we are going to have a minimal, little more than that, just above minimum, then nominal, nominal is nothing but average or uh, normal, then we have a max, maximum value. Then a maximum value little less than that, just below maximum. So this is the extremities we are going to consider consider for arriving at forming the boundary value analysis. So it's very important to have it. This is one of the definition that is used in 
this reference uh, reference uh, from one of the education institute okay uh, boundary value analysis has a couple of uh, very important uh, aspects to uh, we will uh, discuss the next date uh, problem the next date problem is a function of uh, three variables day month and year <coughs> upon the input of certain date it returns the date of the day of that of the input the input variables have the obvious conditions like below day should be 1 to 31 month should be 1 to 12 and year should be 1812 to 2012 so this is the definition of uh, three variables we know this are all from the realistic uh, date similarly we have for clock also we can do so what is that next date problem we have to have here the year has been restricted so that the spaces are not too large why because we know that the system can take up to 2012 so there are more complicated issues to consider due to the dependencies between variables that means these variables are very important too, so that dependencies have to be considered for example this is never a 31st of april that means if we define this dependency of the date based on the month correct no if you have a february or if you have a month so we are not going to have a 31 as an input right so we cannot have a test case identifying a 31 for the month of april or for the month of february or any of the even months so no matter what year is or year is where the day and month are dependent so the nature of these dependencies is the reason this example is so useful to us all errors in the next date problem are generated by invalid input date so very important thing uh, also we need to understand is that we should be aware of the system requirements or user requirements or any uh, what is that called realistic inputs why it is important is one value is uh, depending on the dependent on the other one so here we know the month is depending dependent on the day so the system which takes this day as input it doesn't matter what year you are you have to feed if you feed a month as a april uh, april cannot have a day as 31 so we cannot have a day as 31 in case of february or april etc so we need to have a selection such a way that selection should be dependent that means we need to understand what are the other circumstances that need to be that needs to be considered so it is very important not just enough to have a boundary values just because the day field takes 1 to 31 so also important to understand that has to be of dependency in terms of the variables similarly let's define a clock so we have a hour minute and second so this uh, again uh, we'll have a dependency or an inch other so we cannot go beyond 60 on 60 60 it will go for the next one similarly Uh, we go for 24 that is 24 hours so we will have the total hour of 01 or 0 so likewise we are going to have the issue of our next data problem it is so we need to have a total analysis of the boundary value in such cases important to have an understanding of uh, Uh, the realistic inputs how we are going to feed for the boundary value analysis so we should not uh, get stuck with the problems such as the next date problem one more is there is bit uh, 
tricky it's called a triangle problem i'll just uh, go through simplistically so that uh, uh, this uh, also can be considered so in fact the first introduction of the triangle problem in uh, 73 by goen burger uh, there have been many more uh, references to this problem as well since making this one of the most popular example to be used in conjunction with testing uh, literature <coughs> the triangle problem accepts three integers a b c as an input example each of which are taken to be sides of a triangle that means we have our three sides isosceles equilateral and uh, uh, scalenes uh, whatever you want to call it so these three inputs uh, are sides of a triangle the values of these inputs are used to determine the type of the triangle so what type of a triangle uh, these three inputs are going to decide so the triangle could be one of these like uh, equilateral or it could be isosceles or scalene or it is not at all a triangle so one of these is all factored based on the a b and c so for the inputs to be declared as being a triangle these must satisfy the six conditions so c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 so we have six conditions well before we start the test why because first of all we need to define it's being a triangle or not so to define that we need to have a triangle defined with condition 1 as a greater than or equal to 1 less than or equal to 200 b less than or equal to 1 sorry b greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 200 similarly c between 1 and 200 then we have other uh, binding conditions a should be less than b plus c and uh, b should be less than a plus c c should be less than a plus b so these conditions basically should satisfy in order to form the triangle so otherwise this is never called as a triangle so the type of the triangle provided the conditions are met is determined as follows if all three sides of equal the output is equilateral equilateral exactly one pair of sides is equal the output is isosceles if no pair of sides is equal the output is scalene after we define the triangle we are going to have what type of a triangle it is so we need to be very careful in choosing the test case also we should be realistic in terms of uh, the inputs uh, first of all we need to define the criteria how the requirement has been laid out First, we need to understand. That's what I am always emphasizing that the tester has to have a good knowledge of the system under test. We should not uh, get stuck within the uh, testing, uh, and uh, the testing aspects are not good in terms of test selection technique or test design technique or strategy is not good. First, having understood the system, uh, we should design test cases such a way that the test is well. Uh, behave in terms of executing the and the producing the output of the underneath the embedded system okay so to conclude on the equivalence partitioning and the boundary value analysis the some important points that we need to see is uh these two are very effective test design techniques we have to have mandatorily equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis we can find that boundary value analysis if practiced correctly is one of the most useful test design test case design tech methods so boundary value analysis have to be correctly practiced or implemented having considering all these issues and considering all the ranges considering the different examples that we have seen and uh, uh, the effectiveness of uh, the boundary conditions etc so if it is correctly practiced it will be very useful uh, in terms of finding the bugs in the underneath the embedded software but as per the practices seen in the industry uh, it is often used ineffectively as the testers often see it is so simple they misuse it that means i believe that it is going to work i because when i plug it i apply a power and it is behaving good and i do little changes still it is good as a black box i feel that system is good and gives a confidence that's not the case 
we should not uh, consider that as a primary input rather we should uh, think in terms of having a bug and i am going to challenge it in terms of bringing out all the issues or the tester would not have used it full potential if you get a mobile or a handset or any telephone instrument what basically user do as a user he will plug it he will switch it on he will try to dial so a normal behavior so he gets the content that's fine but instead of using it at its full potential definitely he has to think out of the box in terms of testing it effectively so for testing it effectively he needs to understand what it is capable of and what is the specification what are the conditions that it can accept uh, what are the techniques that he can apply effectively and importantly so that will bring out all the test effects which are uh, having issues in terms of implementation and this is more vital or important why because uh, boundary value analysis will bring uh, the effective way of uh, bringing out the bugs so PVA can provide a relatively simple and formal testing technique that can be very powerful when used correctly. That means we start formally with a simple technique of identifying the equivalence classes, then identify the boundaries for each of the inputs that requirement or requirements identify, then select the tests based on these inputs, select the criteria, apply the tests, and find the errors. when issues are arises such as dependencies between variables or need of foresight into the system functionality we can find boundary value analysis as restrictive that means example we take it as a next day problem uh, realistic boundary value should allow for a user to give month as april and day as 31 but this is not a realistic input for a embedded system having a day as implemented functionality so we cannot expect that so that is a restriction for boundary value analysis i mean we should take a call in terms of boundary value analysis taking out the such cases for such issues so that is the conclusion of equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis i will have some of the glossary in embed software testing added to each slide in different sessions so we'll just go through that acceptance testing we know that it's a formal testing from the user perspective actual result the result behavior of a system as a result of processing the inputs you know what is the behavior the combination of input values of the conditions and the required response for a function of a system so that is the behavior the full specification of a function would normally comprise one or more behaviors you know what is black box testing a test case selection based on the analysis of the specification of the component without reference to its internal knowledge or internal implementation details we have the same in the black box and the white box we know about the logic and the program flow uh, it is in alphabetical order so it's so it is not listed at all but we will review it every one by the future sessions so boundary value and input value or output value which is on the boundary between equivalence classes or an incremental distance either side of the boundary it could be upper below uh, high or low etc so boundary value analysis is another test design technique as equivalence class for a component in which test cases are designed with input representatives of boundary values certification a process of confirming that a system or component complies with specified requirements and is acceptable for operational use so this is a ivmb responsibility so we will talk about certification with the class checklist is a list of questionnaires that can be answered yes or no this is basically used by the support of people for doing the iv and v independent validation verification mostly this will be done as a uh, toll gate before the product is uh, tested and released uh, mostly it will be done by the uh, department of qa 
okay so we have a exercise uh, question uh, define the ep and the bva as this for the below example uh the below example says the refrigerator you know refrigerator has a red and green indicator the optimal temperature in the refrigerator seems to be 3 and 8 degrees if the temperature is within this interval the green indicator is lit otherwise the red indicator is lit that means the indicator in the refrigerator will indicate a green if the temperature is within 3 and 8 If it is beyond that, it will show it as red. So we need to draw a equivalence partition as well as boundary value analysis. This case is for the below. This is an exercise. So one more exercise. Uh, uh, I think it's a continuation of the previous uh, exercise. You can see a diagram of the uh, temperature indicator. Uh, develop a BVA for the example. This is a red and a green indicator. the optimal temperature in the refrigerator is 3 and 8 if the temperature is within this interval the green indicator is lit same thing the temperature range can be divided into three intervals so i just few a few inputs accordingly you can define the boundary value analysis and the equivalence partitioning so from infinity it could be minus any value uh, but without including the 3 Uh, which will result in red. Here down you can see three and below are red, and eight and above are red. Between three and eight is green in the thermometer or the refrigerator the temperature indicator. From three to eight is green, but not including eight to the higher value is red. So one more uh, <coughs> exercise, uh, uh, I think. This exercise was given in the equivalence part. I will do an extension uh, for this. So write equivalence class for the below. When the sensor temperature which is less than 10 degree or greater than 100 degree, it sets the value uh, alert. Else it sets the value normal. So write boundary class values for the above tolerance with the tolerance of plus or minus 1 degree. That means less than 10 degree plus or minus 1, greater than 100 degree plus or minus 4. Should be applied for doing the boundary value analysis. Okay, so some of the embedded system testing works. So we will uh, go through. Uh, we have defined all this in a few sessions. Uh, we are going to have A, B, and B robustness, equivalence class, validating equivalence class, boundary analysis. Any new words we have learned today? Uh, we will see. Single problem, next day third problem is okay. Nominal, average, normal. We will add it. Okay. So we will add. Uh, Nominal, normal, average. All these meaning the same. It is an <coughs> type of input that is fed to the system. So that is about uh, the boundary value analysis. So it's very important to learn boundary value analysis and equivalence partition because the entire test design technique. is founded with the help of these two techniques we need to have this for the embedded software testing